Are you struggling with watercolors and thinking to yourself if it's just you or anybody else is facing the same problem? Well, in this video, I'm going to be covering 15 of the most common watercolor mistakes everybody faces. Also, I will give some solutions on how to overcome them. If you're a complete beginner or have been in the watercolor game for a while, these might be the insights that will be the game changer for you. Hey there, my name is Antonio and three years ago, I began my own watercolor journey. In this channel, we'll be exploring watercolors together turning complex techniques into very easy to follow steps. Spoiler alert, a lot of these struggles have to do with how long have you been doing watercolor and others actually have to do with supplies, but most of them have to do with perfectionism. Number one, control. There's two forces that work against us when we're working with watercolor. One is water and the other is gravity. And if we understand that these two components make watercolor as special as it makes it difficult, we can try to let go of control. There's a lot of pros that say, let the painting paint itself. And that's when the painting really shines. Or two is paper buckling. There's two things here that can be the problem. One, your paper is not really good. And two, you're using too much water. So the two easy solutions is one, manage your water better and two, get thicker paper if you want to work with more water or more wet and wet techniques. Number three is drying time. This one's tricky because it relates to the previous one. If you use a lot of water, then the time it takes for the paper to dry might be higher. There's one very easy way to know if your paper is ready for the next layer or not. It's with the back of your finger, you just touch the surface of the paper. And if it feels cold to the touch, that means it is not ready. Number four is muddiness. This actually has to do more with color theory than watercolors itself. So if you study a little bit more about color theory, you can prevent your colors to be muddy. Number five, color mixing. This is a bit related to muddiness. This is actually not your fault. Like this is just you not knowing and it'll go away very quickly. If you watch any video about color theory 101, but yeah, easy fix. Number six, overworking. I am completely guilty of this. I just never know when to stop painting. This is a good example of overworking. The solution to overworking is try to go over an area only once or twice. This painting right here is a very good example of not overworking. It basically has very good brush economy. Number seven is planning just refers to where to leave some white paper or lighter areas because the subsequent layers of paint that you put down on the paper will make the painting go from light to dark. I mean, a solution for this, it's not more straightforward than actually plan where or what you need to keep light in your painting before you put darker layers of paint on it. Number eight, lack of opacity. I'm kind of running out of fingers here. This kind of relates to the water to color ratio that you mix. One little exercise that I would recommend you to do is to try to go from light to dark in any color, trying to mix heavier and thicker puddles of paint until you get to the darkest of that color. Number nine, patience. I am guilty of not being patient enough. Number 10, fear. With how difficult it is to control watercolors, there is a big component of fear of making mistakes. And that's perfectly fine. But when you're just learning to ride a bike, you probably are afraid to fall, but you know that you're just learning and at some point you're gonna stop falling. And it's the same thing with watercolors. You will make a lot of mistakes and some things are gonna be very nice and happy accidents like Bob Ross says, but just have the confidence that making mistakes is okay. Number 11 relates a lot to number 10, which is, fixing mistakes. The biggest thing about watercolor is that it's very unforgiven. You are not very much allowed to make mistakes. There are some mistakes that you can fix, but there are others that you just have to move on and live with. In watercolor, fixing mistakes is the biggest mistake that you can make. Try to avoid the urge of fixing those mistakes. Number 12, predicting the drying color. This is very difficult to get used to, but eventually you will get used to it. And there's a saying that I heard from Andy Evenson that says, if you put the color down and it looks right, 
then it's wrong. Always try to lay down a shade darker than what you want it to be. When the watercolor dries, it will be right. Number 13, maintaining white. Whites need to be preserved. There are things like masking fluid that can help you preserve them. I personally never have used masking fluid, but that is a solution for you to be able to maintain white and not have to plan ahead so much. Number 14 is granulation. This is not really a mistake on your part, but some people struggle to know why that's happening. And it's usually just the type of paint that you are using. And finally, number 15 is external factors. There are factors like humidity, paper, temperature, outdoor, indoor painting that can affect how your watercolor painting will turn out. A good fix for this is to keep track of where and when you're painting. One day you feel like you did a better job or you had more control. Take account of the situation. Was it colder? Was it more humid, less humid, more dry, less dry, better paper? I mean, all these factors play into how much good control you have and also the result of your watercolor paintings. Oof. That was a lot. And now that you know all the struggles that you can face and how to overcome them, it is time to know where you stand in the progression line. Are you a beginner? Are you an intermediate? Are you an advanced? Next week, I'm gonna be having a video that will test your knowledge and you will be able to see where you stand. If you're feeling unsure and you're not ready to be tested because you're a complete beginner, then I suggest go check out this video where I talk about three simple, easy watercolor techniques every beginner should know.